Okay. So first to so second week of November. So we are under SAS and SM. So our schedule for summative assessment is November 9. Okay. I'd like to do it uh, over two days, no? Summative assessment. Do you follow? Any questions so far? No? So anyway, uh, we barely have about three weeks for lecture. I don't want I, I want I don't want to use the last three days no for lecture so you can review for your no summative assessment okay okay do you follow so tentative schedule for summative assessment is November 9 no? okay it must be followed though so I'd like to use the last day no Sangirap naman if you're going to do it on November 8th yung lip Maybe you will have scheduled for your other exams. Okay. Any questions so far? No. So anyway, uh, the I have reviewed. No, the uh, where's my ano? Bakit nawala yung aking ano? The summative assessment result, or rather the formative assessment result for FA three. No, I have there are two erroneous items. No, I will discuss them later. I think only one. No, I have corrected. Uh, no, I've given everyone a free score on that item. Okay, so you don't need to worry. I've given everyone a free score. So far, the results are okay. No, two participants are on the borderline. The passing grade is fifty-five. No, so far only two participants are on the borderline, and everyone has passed. Of the how many attempts? One hundred sixty-six attempts. Okay, that have been done so far. No. Uh, no one has requested for an extension, so I presume you must have passed every year now. So there will be no need for that because only two are on the borderline. No? They are not failing, they're on the borderline, okay? So we don't know who they are, but I will know them, okay? So any questions so far? So if you look at our, you know, we, will, we are now on the last part. No? I hope we can cover this quickly because... I understand you are also taking programming languages, right? Right? Any questions so far? No. So I'd like to go this go through this quickly. No. Okay. So programming languages. Now programming is an important uh, is an important uh, component in your course, no? Especially in your uh, major subjects, no? Because you're all IT and computer science and information sciences, no, you cannot evade programming. You there will be programming courses later in the future. Now, if you graduate from a, an IT or a computer science course, you will most probably land a job that will all that will require you programming. Some somehow, no, you will have to write programs like you have to write programs in SQL. Even if you write or create simple web pages, you have to use HTML and JavaScript. And then uh, what you have you, no? Django, Python, you will always be working with them. So uh, we, will, we will start with an introduction to the programming languages. No? Some of you must have done programming already, right? No, in, in senior high? No? So anyway, for those who haven't done any programming, it's okay. No? We are going to start from the beginning. Okay? I'm going to check the attendance again later. So what are programming languages? Remember that the programming we've done so far are closely machine language, no? Uh, commands that are understandable, that are re readily converted into machine code, opcodes that are converted into instructions that are processed by the CPU. Like when you say load, store, jump, no? These are machine code instructions present on a particular machine. But the problem with this kind of a language is each kind of a machine has a different language. Diba? The PDP-11 has a different language from the IBM 701. The 701 has a different, although it's a close resemblance of the IAS computer, it also uses a different language. No? <clears throat> so uh, there was a need for a better language that came about after the second generation of computers during the 1960s no? and the 1950s. Okay. And now, uh, the first programming language came about 
in the IBM computer, no, in the in 1957 or 59. Let we will look at that. No? So then ito kasi why is there a need for programming? Because if you don't have a third generation language, no. So the first generation language is the machine language. The second second level is the level of assembly language. Assembly language programming uh, may not uh, may is not done in binary. No, the main difference between assembly language and machine language is uh, machine language programming is done in binary language binary numbers no? using binary numbers. Assembly language is done using uh, hexadecimal numbers, which are easier to understand. And anyway, it uses the same instruction set. So therefore, uh, as, uh, assembly language programs are also machine dependent, which means that an assembly language may not apply to another machine. An assembly language program written for a particular machine, like an IBM 701, may not work for a PDP-11, okay? Uh, do you follow? So there's a need for a better language, a universal language, so that that can be applied to uh, a bigger set or a bigger family of computers. Nowadays, we only have two main two, fam two families, no? like the one by Apple and the other one by IBM clones, no? which are running Windows OS, okay? Now, here's a piece of C++ code or C, C code, a programming language called C or C, C sharp or C++, which was written in the 1970s. No? An attempt to universalize all programming language. No? This is called E. So you see this, this can be understood easily by, hum, by humans or by people. No? So we start with a main. A main is a main function. A program is a collection of functions. Okay. So the first... Uh, action taken by the program is CLR SCR, which means clear the screen. Print F, hello world. I am this is going to print the program called hello world. And then gets, gets means wait for an input from a key keyboard. Okay, we will not run this anymore because we don't have a, I, I have a uh, Visual C++, no? but I don't have a console, no? so we will not run this anymore, okay? As long as you see that this is a third level programming language because one of the main uh, distinguishing factors is they are not in machine instructions. No, they are not coded. Like you say, clear screen. It's not load. It's not a machine code. No, they are not coded. And like load store, no? We say print F, which means you, you print okay, the following lines. No? Print F to the console. So print F, print the, the string. We say get, get character. Okay, do you follow? And then uh, third level programming languages are not written in binary or in hexadecimal, but they are written in decimal numbers. So all computations are in decimal. Okay, so uh, on the other hand, these programs cannot be run directly. We will need a special software which will translate this into machine readable codes. So these are translators, no? So Translators are either compilers or interpreters. Okay. So these are the levels, hierarchy of uh, le level language. This is wrong spelling. No? This is from geeks for geeks. Geeks are really geeks. They don't know how to spell words. Okay. High level language like C sharp no? and so on and so forth, right? Okay. And then assembly language is the intermediary, which is in uh, hexadecimal machine language is the one we've written before, and the uh, and the uh, computer hardware processes the the language. Okay. Now nowadays there are three high level languages. The third level, we have C, Python, C sharp, R, Ruby, no, Cobol, Ada, no. The, the popular now nowadays are C sharp, C, C plus plus, no, and then we have uh, Python. Uh, we have PHP. JavaScript, Java, of course. Okay. Every now and then, a new language occurs. No? So these are the most popular languages. C, C Sharp on Python, Java, Scala, I'm not sure of this. C Sharp, Ruby and Rails is a scripting language. Go is a gaming language. And JavaScript is a language for developing web pages. Okay. 
Okay. Now, what must be a programming language? It must be easy to simple and easy to learn. Okay. Because programming is a difficult task, so it must be readable and understandable by human by people. No? Abstraction, which means it must be able to hide details like. Before you do a jump, actually you will do a, a minus, no? Jump if minus, jump if above, no? No, that's what we like to avoid. So abstraction must be hidden. So jumps must just be if then else, no? So that uh, the, the actual no, details of how they're executed are not visible to the writing programmer, the authoring programmer, okay? It must be portable, which means the code you write must be portable to other machines. No? It can, should be easily be convertible to machine code. No? It, it, sh it should be well structured, which means it should be easy to find an error. No? And it should have a single environment. It should be provided with a single environment, like an integrated development. It's, it's called an integrated development because it's where you write your code and then run it at the same time. Consistent with syntax and semantics, which means semantics means the meaning of, of commands, which means that a particular command must have a corresponding particular function. Okay. Independent dalawang function. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. How did uh, programming languages came about? Remember that during the 1940s, 1950s, when the computers were first invented. There was only one one computer has a one language. Now, in 1957, that was in the IBM 701, a uh, programming language was developed by John Bach, who's called Fortran. Fortran stands for Formula Translator or Formula Translation. It's a third level, level, level language, so different from assembly language, written in order to develop uh, scientific calculations like polynomial evaluation, no? and so on and so forth, because computers those days are particularly used for high precision computations. So Chan Bakus from IBM invented Fortran. Now, in 1958, okay, the following year, also somewhere related to DEC, because my DEC na dito, di ba? DEC PDPs, they, uh, a certain language was developed called Algol. This it didn't specify here, but it's some somewhere related to DEC computers. No? Uh, Algol became the predecessor of it's called algorithmic language. Okay, remember that before 1957, no, in the first uh, no, early computers in 1883, uh, uh, programs are written as algorithms. No, algorithms are mathematical statements. The first program written by Ada Lovelace was in an algorithm for Bernoulli numbers to run on the analytical engine. Okay, so Algol was developed okay, to translate mathematical algorithms into computer programs in 1958. Algol was such a popular language that it became the basis for the development of other languages such as Pascal. Pascal is still prevalent no? nowadays. It's present on a programming platform called Delphi, which is very popular. And there's also Algol was the basis for C, C Sharp, and Java. In 1959, in the IBM, this was the, the time no, when IBM was translating into uh, th uh, three pro, uh, S33. No? Then they were trying to develop uh, computers used for databases and development for development of business applications. No? So in 1959 in IBM, no? Grace Mary Hopper invented a program called COBOL. I was able to write this myself no? because in the early PCs, there was Microsoft COBOL. Microsoft also produced no? its version of COBOL. COBOL stands for Common Business Oriented Language. It was very popular, no? It was used for a wide variety of, of applications like credit card processing during the, those times, airline management, airline reservation by IBM was written in COBOL, no? 
ATMs, credit card processing systems, early ATMs were written in COBOL. It can be written over a wide area network. In 1958, 1959, uh, language for inter artificial intelligence was written by John McCarthy at MIT. It's called LISP. LISP processing. LISP. I've programmed this myself also. It's became the basis for Ruby and Python. Now, in some other subjects, this is still taught, no? not for practical applications, for but for academic exercises. Because if you are good in LISP, you can be good in other languages like SQL. LISP is an object-based no, language. It's not object-oriented, but it's object-based, which means that when you describe a program, you describe it in terms of how what it is, not how it is. No? So it's a different uh it's a different uh, way of thinking no? when you write list but this is useful because it, your conventions in list can be used in SQL because when you write SQL programs you describe not enumerate steps okay when you write programs normally you enumerate the steps step 1 step 2 step 3 but for list and SQL you describe what you need not how you are going to get it okay in 1964, no, this is already in the IBM PC, almost, no, written by John Kemeny and Thomas Kurtz, Dartmouth College. In, I think it is in Boston. Written a very simple, wrote a, a very simple program called BASIC. No? Later, this was adopted by Bill Gates and Paul Allen to become the Microsoft's first official product. No? It's called Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code, BASIC. Okay. The first product of Microsoft is basic, but this was first originally developed by John Kemeny and Thomas Cox. In 1970, a, pop, a very popular language, Pascal, was developed by Nicholas Worth no, in honor of the French mathematician Blaise Pascal. This became very popular and it's still present in this. Okay. Small talk was developed in 1972. Smalltalk is the predecessor, is the beginning, beginner of all, beginning of all scripting languages like JavaScript, Python, Ruby on Rails. No, it, it, this is not used anymore, but it's still used. No, a while, okay.
Okay, I'm sorry, no? Let's resume, no? Okay. So, a very important development came in uh, 1972. Dennis Ritchie, at Bell Labs. No? Bell Labs is now the modern, modern AT&T. No? It's like PLDT of the Philippines. No? Develop a programming language that can be nearer to machine language or assembly language so that they can be used to write uh, hardware related applications like device drivers no? it's a high level language close to human humans no? human language and more removed from machine code however it can be used to manipulate the hardware better no? it became very popular no? And it's still present nowadays, and it does. It was developed also by Microsoft as Microsoft C, C, and Microsoft C Sharp, and C plus plus. MATLAB was developed for mathematical applications in 1978. This is still being popular nowadays. No? Other deri derivatives were Objective C. There was also there are many other derivatives of C, but in 1983, Bjorn Stroustrup's improved, enhanced the C language, no? also from Bell Labs, no? called C Sharp, C++, no? to make it object-oriented. No? Okay, object-oriented languages allow, uh, allow us techniques such as for using code, no? such as uh, information hiding, uh, inheritance. No? So nowadays, programming languages like PHP, C Sharp are all object-oriented languages. Where a predecessor is the first official net uh, scripting language developed for the web no? under the Linux system. Perl. No? It was later uh, followed by Ruby on Rails, no? developed for scripting languages. No? System administration network programming. Haskell. Okay, cool. Also, a uh, uh, derivative of uh, MATLAB no? for mathematicians. Python was developed in 1991 but became popular in the early 2000s when it was used officially in the net for developing web applications. Okay, and nowadays there are two popular uh, platforms using uh, Python it's, it's uh, Django and Flask. You will use them sometime. No? Visual Basic was developed in 1991 by Microsoft 1993 R 1995 Java was developed by Sun Microsystems okay it was used to be to, to be a general purpose language used for a wide variety of applications like device drivers no communications even smartphones no nowadays there are applications that are still running Java 3 billion devices run Java in 1995, PHP was developed for developing web pages you know, by Rasmus Landorf. It's very popular, no? It dominated the web. Nowadays, more than half of web applications are in PHP. Now, very popular languages, no? Or platforms like WordPress, uh, you have Laravel, uh, are written on top of PHP. Ruby. Ruby on Rails, also a, a programming language for developing web pages, no? was written by Mats Matsumo, Yukihiro Matsumo. It's a combination of a language. No? It's actually a derivative, it's actually derived from Perl. No? JavaScript, very popular no? nowadays. One of the most developed popular languages is JavaScript. We will use it. Why is that? Because Amazon, no? Amazon. The most popular website, most probably, you know, even more popular than, I think, no, Facebook, is developing applications using JavaScript. Now, if you want to land to a high, uh, a good job later in the future, no, it's an investment to study JavaScript. Why? Because most of the high, high paying jobs in the net online require JavaScript. Like if you want to land in Amazon, programming job there, you must be uh, uh, proficient in JavaScript, like applications like uh, Node.js, Angular, no? and uh, React. 
and jQuery. No? You must be, you will have time for this. No? In 2000, Microsoft developed C Sharp. It did not succeed early, but later, no? uh, they have a very popular platform called ASP.NET Core, okay? which is competing against no? Django and Laravel. So most probably it will get a dominant share of the market in the next five years. I have used it myself, no? So may kalaban na, may kalaban na ngayon ang Django and Laravel, okay? ASP not that core. Scala, 2003, many other languages. In 2009, the Go language was developed no? for developing. It's, it's an artificial intelligence language. The, the first few applications were game games, okay? Any questions? Let's let's check my time. Then ten fifty, so we still have time. So anyway, formally, we will start our first programming session. You have your programming language introduction, right? Under Mr. Paasa. So if you are using C-sharp, are you using C-sharp, everyone? What language are you using? Uh, C++ C++ pala. So very close to JavaScript, so we can go through this quickly. No? We can go through this quickly, okay? We we'll just have a little HTML. And I'd like you to create your own site. Uh, there are many other free hosting sites, no? But in W3 schools, look at, I, I will require you this, no? Create your own website in W3 schools. Dito, okay? Now, there's a new site there, okay? You can create, you can sign up and create a free uh, hosted website. It means we are going to write web applications and really deploy them on W3 school so that I can check them myself, okay? I don't have to go through your code. Kasi mas madali mag-check ng ano dito. You have a, a free website, no? In W3 schools, uh, which can have 100 MB of data a month, no? 100 MB storage, no? I thought it was a 5 MB storage, no? Okay? Now, I have my account myself. No, meron akong JR Heralde dot W3 Jerry Heralde at this is my website. No, this is the website that I'd like you to create yourself. No, okay, ito ang gusto kong website because we are going to write assignments like adding two numbers. Okay, and then you go back. Okay, do you follow? Okay, so you create a an account in W3 schools, okay? And create your initial website. Pwede namang ito eh, okay? Do you follow? Okay, can we copy this? No? We just copy this and I log in. I forgot my password, no? What's the, my password in W3 schools? Let me just look it up. No? Okay. Okay, I now have my password. So for example, you can log in. W3 Schools is an educational website, okay? Specializing in programming, any type of programming, no? HTML, Python, JavaScript, C++, no? You have everything there. So there's my, no, I'm still logged in, okay? Okay. Now you can enroll into the courses of W3 schools, schools there, no? And then you can get certificates which you can include in your portfolio so that you know you apply to a website no? or to an online job. No? You can get recognized, okay? So for example, I have GRA Hiralde. This is my no. Okay, this is my password. Now, if you log in there, uh, okay, 
this is your site no okay uh, you, you have three you have free you know, free tutorials okay you can study and sign in for a free tutorial no but you can have your spaces this is the spaces quick spaces this refers to your web space which is w3schools.com now i have i have a file this is my you know spaces if you look at if i'll open it no this, that's my website no okay these are my files show files these are my files i have an index html i have an add to numbers html i have styles.css and scripts.css okay i will upload them i'll show you how to upload them no and then uh let's rename this later no index to that html okay okay now the the file name index.html will be the fit, the default web uh, home page okay you can use your adu email in my case i'm using my adu email for my account in w3 schools okay anong email ang gagamitin you can use your adu email no? you can use any other email but it's good that if you use your adu email because it's a registered site okay so nandito now let's go to our first website okay can we do that okay you download your visual studio code okay we will write it here you can use notepad okay do you follow okay let's go to basic html what is an html we have learned already this is created by who created this uh tim berners lee diba? who created html tim berners lee it's called hypertext markup language okay it was written by tim berners lee in order to be the standard language for document retrieval no? and it make, it was adapted by the internet no? diba? sa history natin okay. I'm sure Tim Berners-Lee oh, that's how he looks like he invented it in 1999 no? it, it became official in 1999 uh, it was officially written in 1993 no? HTML so HTML is hypertext markup language it's also a third level language used for document retrieval in the internet okay they follow so we will have you know what everybody knows html right what meron in there okay actually we can start writing this already you know so for example you go to w3 schools it's already there's a connection from our ano, no? from our Daigler site. Okay. Daigler natin. So you just click this. I'm sorry, HTML script. Okay. 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 This is an example. Okay. I can copy this. You follow. And I can go to my W3 schools and I can create a new file, okay? A new file called index.html. It's creating it myself. Oh. Uh, it's creating it itself. No. When you create a new file, it, it's named index.html. It doesn't have. No. And then I can now create, I can edit this. Okay. I can edit this. And then paste. This is the basic HTML. Uh, uh, an HTML uh, file is composed of what tags? No, a tag will start with a lesser than sign and will end with a greater than sign. Do you follow? Do you follow? Now, every HTML should start with a doc type tag. A doc type tag starts with an exclamation point with the word, with the reserve word doc type and space and HTML. Okay. You specify that this is an HTML file by saying doc type. And then 
all files should be covered by the HTML. Ito. Do you follow? All files will be, will be started with the HTML tag and the slash HTML tag. The HTML tag set indicates the beginning. Okay, and the slash HTML tag indicates the end or it's sometimes called the end tag. Do you follow? Do you follow? Okay, so from our HTML basic, we can copy this. Okay, your HTML file can have a body. It can have a header. It can have a footer. Do you follow? But everything must be included in the header tag. Okay, do you follow? So let's copy this. Okay, so each step, there, there's a beginning HTML. There's an ending HTML tag. There's a beginning body tag. Like, like the HTML tag, the body tag must also have an end. So this is the end uh, body tag. Okay? So H1 is a header tag. It's just a header for text. No? So it, these are different, different header tags called H1, H2, H3. They are classified according to their sizes. Okay? Do you follow? Okay, so kung H1, I think H1 is the biggest. P stands for paragraph, okay? So we can save this. Okay, now let's look at our ano, W3 spaces. JRA Heralde that W3 spaces. Let us refresh. Now it becomes this. Okay, let me just uh, check. Check the attendance again, okay? Alcantara, present. Arca, present. Sombrado, Walan, present, sir. Kabuga, present, sir. Kalubag, sino pa bang dat dat bagong dating? Wala naman, no? Okay, because you chat me, no? Every time you're on a zog, zog there. So I'd like you to create your, uh, no, your uh, W3 spaces, okay? So, uh, okay. Asa na yung ating, ano, wala na. Create the first HTML. Name it index.html. Index.html becomes your home page. Do you follow? Do you follow? That's the first assignment, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll bring that here. I'll, I'll post it later, no? The W3 schools. Okay? Do you follow? So every HTML should be started by a doc type HTML tag, an HTML tag itself, and a body tag. It should be terminated by an end body and end HTML. Okay? Do you follow? Any questions so far? So madali lang, no? You just create an account in W3 Spaces. Let's look at header tags. What is a header tag? <coughs> a header tag displays text labels in different sizes. The different labels are H1 to H6. They, they differ according to sizes. Okay, let's let's copy this. Ito na lang muna tayo sa ano. Let's copy this and put it there in W3 spaces. Pwede na tayo mag-edit dito. H1, okay? Let's save. Then let's... Uh, okay. A heading here. Now let's try the different headers, okay? So we can have H1, we can try H2. I think H1 is the bigger. Now, you should be careful with this. 
If you start with an H2, you end with an H2. If you start with an H1, you end with an H1, okay? You don't start with an H1 and end with an H2, okay? Let's refresh this. That's a little smaller, okay? Let's change the text anyway. This is heading three, so that we will know that there's a change. Let's change this to an H3. Okay. But later, when we're writing programs, we'll do it in Visual Studio Code, okay? And then we will upload it to uh, a, uh, w3 spaces. Let's run this. Refresh. This is heading three, not a little different size. Let's try, uh, finally, let's try h6. Save. So you can you can actually do click the preview, hmm. or you can go to your website and then refresh. So this is heading six. This is a little different. Okay. Do you follow? Any questions so far? Okay. So I will give you an assignment to submit to me. Your now you can look at the code here. No, you can look at the code of your HTML by right clicking on a blank space and use. Click view page source in Chrome. So that's the same code you have. Okay. So are you familiar with this already? So you just review this. Okay. So that's the header tag. Very basic. Then there's the P tag. What's P? What does P stand for? P stands for paragraph tag. Okay. You can write very long paragraphs. No. By starting a, a header tag and ending with an NP tag. Okay, so there are two basic tags, no? header and P paragraph. No? That's aside from HTML and body. Okay, so what are the tags we have learned so far? Doc type, HTML, body, header, and P. Okay. Uh, uh, what will happen if you just write a simple text? For example, I'll just write a simple text here. This is a simple text. And try to end this with an end tag. Okay. Let's try to do that. Let's look at simple labels. So, kailangan mo talaga mag-label tag. Okay. Or P tag. Okay. So, it didn't understand this and what will happen to this to your W3 schools. So, hindi niya naintindihan. No? We have to remove this. Save and you can click a preview. Okay, so that's what it is. No? You just preview. Okay, service. So we'll we'll not delve deep deeper in it so much right away. No, we'll just uh, try the basic HTML which we'll need in order to start JavaScript. Okay. Okay. Sana tayo. So I'll post an assignment for you to create your own, ano, and pass your uh, W3 school website. So magagawa na lang ako ng ano, ng assignment in text file. Or, or question na lang, no? Question na lang. Anyway, there's still time. Let me just create a question.
create new category. This is this. We had a number. Short answer. AC SA na lang no we'll cancel this let's, let's make an essay question para walang ano in short answer there must be an answer So uh, we'll give this our deadline. Okay. In 10 days, because you will have an assignment already. It's 25 days long. Big man. Big man, you're late. No? So November 9, yung ating ano, no? Final assessment. That's a barely three weeks more. That's a new message. Suarez. We put it here. Ah, but nito no. It should be in form of a quiz.
Okay. We'll enable this until October 20. Pero kailangan na ito before October 20, no? To follow. Okay. Yeah, Chavez. Okay. Hang, no? Hindi na hang. Hindi na lang. Add na ba siya? Wala pa. Okay. So I hope you see this already now. It's already there. You give me your uh I pass I will move it upwards, no? Okay, here now, you specify it here. Preferably. So, Malay. Preferably. So you can now start writing here, Anna. Your personal website. Free for all, it, Anna. You can add your picture there by the IMG tag. Okay, so create a website in your no in your preferred host. Okay, and then launch whatever you need to launch because your assignments will be there. No, Chavez, Chavez is already marked and Q. Big man and you know, Q. Okay, any questions so far? So let's do a little, uh, no. Let, let's proceed a little further. No? These, are, these are easy things. No? 
Kailangan natin tapusin ito is no, before November 9. So we know paragraph tag tags in input tags no. Uh, how would you like to ask for a question for example? You want to have an inter interactive website where you ask a question from your client no? From your user. Do you follow? So uh there are different types no. Uh, the 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 input type is is done using an input tag. Okay? An input tag. So you can have examples here. No? For example, uh, usually you will include inputs using a form. Okay? Using a form. Okay? Do you follow? Do you follow? So we can, we can do this. No? We can use this no? in our... No? You, you can also do try it yourself and then run. This is the website you get. Okay, do you follow? Okay. So we can try this in our, you know, in our, we just copy the whole code. Now, the label, the form, the form tag, okay, is, uh, okay, is a, is, is a, okay, is a tag which will begin the input. Okay, and then the action will be taken to action page.php, for example. Okay, when you click this here, yeah. okay, do you follow? Do you follow? Okay, so label is a label for the question. If, if you have a question, we will type a label first, and then the input, the, the, the answer will be on the type text. Do you follow? So to, to, to make this, no, uh, let's let's just copy this no, and try it in our website. Okay. Okay. So nandito naman tayo sa eh, W3 schools. Okay. Let me just paste it here. Okay. And try to save and save this. Okay. And then uh, preview. That will actually bring you to the same space. Okay. Okay, so that's that's what it is, no? For example, you have John. Roy. Submit you don't have an action that page that PHP, so uh, you will go to this, okay? Do you follow? Do you follow? Okay. Any questions so far? How do we move from page to page? For example, uh, I have here in my ano. Uh, I have here a program to add two numbers. This one. Okay. This add two adds two numbers. Okay. How do I make a link? From this to, to that, okay? You use the href tab. No? So, sorry, hindi ko nalagay sa ating ano, no? Href tab. Uh, I'll put it later, no? The href tab, no? The href tab allows you to put your, no? To put, to link your page from one area to another, okay? Uh, let me show my files. Meron ako dito nga na example. No? Index 2. Here it is. Here it is. AH, href tag. AHREF tag. No. Do you follow? HREF tag. Okay. Okay. Can we, uh, let me copy this. Okay.
Do I have a, another version, by the way? Uh, we can also look at the W3 schools for the particular. Uh, We'll search it from search it from here. I forgot the syntax, no, but you can always do I put it in a, in, in our website. No? This is an AH ref, okay? Do you follow? Do you follow? I'll copy this and put this in my website. Let me remove this. If you need to press F12, I'm sorry, no. This is an example program for adding two numbers in. No, in uh, add, I have add two numbers that HTML. Say, let me go back to my you know, my spaces. I just like to check the name. Show files now. So the name is add two numbers that HTML. Okay, add two numbers that HTML. So let me check if I have the correct code. Add two numbers that HTML. Okay. So let me preview this. So I now have a link. Okay. So this is my add two numbers example. So the sum of two and three is five. When you go back, you go back to your main page. Share. The share is very late. Okay. So you follow. So your first assignment will be create your own web, web page. Put anything there, put a picture, put a profile. No? And then, like for example, if you will have an assignment, okay, you'll put it there. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Let me add a uh, source here. Still needs to be reorganized. Huh? Okay. So we'll develop this slowly. No, uh, we may not have a lot of uh, 
uh, styling na. We'll we'll discuss a little styling but we'll concentrate on programming. Okay? Programming in JavaScript. Okay, so I have here an example of add two numbers. You know, first up, it asks for the first number, ask for the second number. Click OK. They follow no. Narca. So any questions? Okay, create your website now. Create your website yourself. Any questions for the moment? Okay. Okay, so that will be up for now. Okay, next, next meeting will formally start with JavaScript. Okay, if you're doing C++, I think we can do this quickly. Any questions? Okay. So I'll upload this session. Now. Okay. See you next meeting, everyone. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. You create your website. Okay. And then pass it there. Pass me the information of the website. Okay. Thank you, everyone.